first, I just want to say a word to all of the readers who have supported and encouraged me with their letters and emails and their websites. And I want to tell them that I think the Internet is wonderful, and I think that they're wonderful, and that it was for them that I put up my own website, ljanesmith.net. Yes, everyone, I'm Elisa Jane. My parents didn't have much imagination. And um, that also on that website, there are lots of free downloads, all sorts of goodies, everything from wallpaper to portraits of the characters to news stories about the night world by me, all free. And I hope that any readers who are interested will drop by. The question, what is the night world, is often asked of me. And it's interesting because the night world isn't a place. The basic idea is simply that all around us are vampires and other creatures of the night. Then they're living so secretly amongst humans that most humans never find out about it. I think it says on the inside of the book that your best friend could be a vampire and so could your latest crush, and you might never know about it. And the Night World books tell the story of two related families, one of vampires and one of witches. And there's some shapeshifters thrown in, too. And the problem that these teenagers are having is that they are doing the thing most forbidden according to the laws of the night world, which is they're falling in love with humans. And the penalty, according to the laws of the night world for that, is death. And that is basically what the night world is about. The inspiration for this series, I think, just goes basically back to the old Romeo and Juliet forbidden love plot. The forbidden love occurs between an innocent bumbling human and a vampire witch or shapeshifter. And since they're soulmates, this love is completely irresistible no matter how hard they fight against it, and no matter how much of enemies they may be in the beginning, it doesn't matter if one is a vampire and the other is a vampire hunter. They can't help but falling in love because the soulmate principle is stronger than they are. What the soulmate principle is is simply the idea that each person has one perfect mate in the world, one person born to be their other half. And what's worrying the older night people is that more and more vampire teenagers are finding their soulmates in humans, which is, again, against their laws. If I could be part of the night world, it would be very difficult for me to choose what to be. Of course, I'd love to be a vampire with their extraordinary powers and their unearthly beauty and their ability to wear corsets on the outside of their clothing and black lipstick and black fingernail polish and their very long lifespan. But I'd have to get used to a major change in diet because I don't even like rare steaks. So I don't know about that. I think it would be fun to have the powers of a witch. And I also like the culture of the witches very much because it's oriented towards strong female roles, which I like to promote. But then, of course, I'm an animal lover, so maybe it would be fun to turn into a wolf or a tiger or a sleek black panther whenever I wanted to. So it's difficult to choose just one clan. I think what I'd really like is to be able to sample all three different clans. People often ask me which book I enjoy writing the most, and it's always the latest book that I've been writing. And in this case, it would be the last Night World book, the book in which the apocalypse comes and dragons destroy all the major cities in the world, leaving a handful of teenagers to try to save the world. But I've always had an affection for the first book of the Night World series as well. It's called Secret Vampire, and it poses a moral dilemma. I've always wondered what I would do if I were in the heroine Poppy's position, and she has three months to live and then certain deaths from 
an obscure disease. And she also has a friend who she finds out is both her soulmate and a vampire. And the question is, does she let him make her a vampire so as to cheat death, or does she remain human and go ahead and die? So I think I'll always have an affection for that particular book. My advice to young writers, young people who would like to be writers, would be, first of all, read. Read, 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 read everything they can get their hands on. Um, and actually, better yet, make your local librarian your best friend because she or he will certainly be able to recommend books that will stretch your mind and help you grow as a writer. As a kid, I was always in and out of a library, and a new library was like a pirate's treasure chest to me. I wanted to find out what new books there were inside. I'm a big supporter of libraries, and I really encourage everyone else to be. My second point of advice would be something that you've heard before, but really, really do it right every single day, whether it's poetry, prose, or just an entry in your journal. Write something every single day. And third, when you become really serious about getting published, go buy a book called Writer's Market and other writers' handbooks. They're terrific resources for any writer, and they have all of the information in them that I can't give in this short time. That's what advice I would give to a young writer.